What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Nozoop for you here, and you might be noticing right now that I am playing the USS Fletcher. And the reason for that is I wanted to talk a little bit about the USS Fletcher because it figures in prominently to the video or the movie that I'm going to review today, which is Greyhound, starring Tom Hanks. First, a little bit about the Fletcher right now, because I, I haven't played it in a long time, and watching this movie made me want to play it. And this round isn't anything spectacular, and I've played Fletcher off and on throughout the past couple months. And I think the really nice thing about the USS Fletcher right now is that, despite everything going on in the game, despite the proliferation of HE, SAP, radar, everything else, the Fletcher has still withstood all the power creep and everything going on. I think the Fletcher is still a really, really good destroyer. I still enjoy it, and despite this not being a mega damage round, I was still able to pick it up after a month or so, go out there, and have a decent enough round and an enjoyable round, which is really all that matters in this game, having an enjoyable round, right? So I think the Fletcher has withstood the test of time in World of Warships, and watching Greyhound has only renewed my love for this ship, the Fletcher, and the USS Kid, which is the other Fletcher class in this game, and I'll touch on the USS Kid here in a little bit. So, much love for the Fletcher, I know many of you love the Fletcher, just a quick plug right now, I decided to go out and create a USS Fletcher shirt. I'm going to put the link to that in the description of this video. Check it out. I think it's pretty awesome. I, I really do. I like it. I think the graphic is cool on it. Uh, show your Fletcher love if you want to. If not, you know what? So what? <laughs> I don't care. It's perfectly all right. But it's there if you want to take a look along with some other shirts I've created in Teespring. On to the movie review. And... Greyhound is based off of C.S. Forrester's book, The Good Shepherd. And for those of you unfamiliar with C.S. Forrester, he is also responsible for the Hornblower series of novels, which takes place during the Napoleonic Wars. And Hornblower, it's a phenomenal series. The, the show was made um, using that book as well. There was a movie with Gregory Peck back in the, I want to say the 50s maybe, or the 60s, and... They're, they're just a good series. Very, very much like Master and Commander, um, if you've seen that. Yeah, I think Hornblower came out before Master and Commander. So, C.S. Forrester's a good author, and this is what it's based off of. The movie stars Tom Hanks, and I, I want to say that I'm a very discerning war movie enthusiast. And I, I like realism in my war movies. I, I like them to be accurate. And I think a lot of the issues right now with many naval war movies is, A, they're, they're just not realistic. I mean, the way the people act, the way the actors act, I feel that it, it just lacks authenticity. And the other issue with naval movies is the, the computer graphics. CGI is usually just absolutely... I don't want to say it's horrible, but you, you can tell it's fake. Midway suffered from this problem. Uh, Pearl Harbor, and I, I really shouldn't even be throwing that movie in here because it was abysmal, but that suffered from the same issue along with a lot of anachronisms, having modern ships in there. So, as far as naval movies have been concerned, the last really, really good one we've had was Das Boot. And I, I really think Das Boot kind of sets the bar for both naval and World War II movies in general. I, I really feel it's one of the greatest World War II movies that has been created. Now, this year alone, and by this year I mean last year and this year, 2019-2020, uh, has, has been a decent year for war movies, or at least for a war movie. We had 1917 come out, which obviously World War I, but I feel that's probably one of the best war movies to come along in a long, long time, or at least a short while. So I was very, very impressed by that, and I went into Greyhound with that movie in mind and along with Das Boot. So, I, I think, overall, I'm very pleased with Greyhound. I think Tom Hanks did a wonderful job. If you're looking for character building, though, this is not the movie for you. Greyhound really 
throws you right in the midst of things. I, I mean, it puts you in the middle of the battle, and it is unrelenting for a very short hour and a half. And that's the length of this movie, an hour and a half. That's actually very short by modern movie standards. But in that hour and a half, you really don't have time to take a breath, which is nice. I mean, it is just straight action from beginning to end, and I like that. Tom Hanks does a great job as a rookie commander leading a convoy across the Atlantic, the cold Atlantic, and I, I mean, there's points where it, in the movie you can just feel the cold. I mean, they, they did a really good job portraying that. The thing that I like about this movie, or at least one of the things, is that as far as naval movies goes, yeah, there, there's some scenes that you look at and you're like, yeah, that doesn't look all too realistic, but at the very least, the Greyhound, which is what they named the Fletcher-class destroyer in this in this movie, which never existed. Greyhound did not exist, though the ship number uh, that was shown, and I can't remember what it was, uh, that was laid down, but it was never completed. Greyhound, completely fictitious, but Greyhound was filmed on the USS Kidd, which is a real destroyer that you can go visit in Louisiana if you want to. I, I think that helped this movie a lot. It helped me a lot, just knowing that they were acting on a real ship and that there was very limited computer graphics on the ship. And they went through great lengths to make the ship look how it did back then. They restored a lot of the gun mounts, and I, I really think that added to the realism of this movie. I do want to touch once again on the actors in this movie. You'll be hard-pressed to recognize anyone in this movie outside of Elizabeth Shue, who you might remember from Adventures in Babysitting, and I felt she was really out of place in this movie. It was basically a flashback, and one of the few non-war scenes in the movie, and I, I, I just... I don't want to say it didn't belong, and it wasn't like gratuitous in that they went on for a while and it got all sappy and everything else. It was just a fleeting memory uh, from Tom Hanks' character. Uh, so it wasn't that bad, not like some movies do. Uh, like uh, We Were Soldiers Once and Young, which I felt kind of went back to the home front a little too much. Um, but she's one of the only other actresses or actors you'll recognize in this movie. And then there's Stephen Graham, who is a uh, British actor, and you'll probably recognize him from Snatch. Uh, everyone else in this movie, probably not going to recognize, which I think is a good thing because you, didn't, you, you don't get lost in the actors. You don't... Uh, focus on the actors more than the action going on. And I, I think that helps the movie a lot as well. But aside from that, there's really no character development. I, I can't remember any characters in movie name at all. Um, there's just no time to build the characters because you're thrown into war right away. And the premise of the movie, of course, is Tom Hanks is leading a convoy across the Atlantic that has several, several cargo ships... Uh, several troop transports, and he has to protect this. They lose air cover, and in the black hole abyss of the North Atlantic, they're hunted by a wolf pack of submarines. And you, you can imagine how scary that would be. And, you know, I, I can only imagine because I'm watching this movie, and, you know, Tom Hanks is... Uh, He's the Navy equivalent of what an army would be a lieutenant colonel. So he's a commander in this movie. And I am, I'm thinking that it's crazy because if I was in World War II with my current rank as a major in the army, uh, which would have been a lieutenant commander in the Navy, I very well could have been put in command of a Fletcher-class destroyer. Uh, that has happened. Uh, so it's kind of a scary thought knowing that you could be thrown into that situation. And being hunted by a wolf pack, you know, four or five German submarines, it's pretty much as bad as it can get. But overall, I, I enjoyed the movie. I, I thought the movie was really good. The action scenes were intense. I thought Tom Hanks did a really good job. A little more subdued than most movies, and he, he didn't really have those moments of self-doubt that he usually goes through in all his war movies, which I, I thought was kind of nice. It was just him being a commander, him being in command of this ship, and doing his mission. There was little time for anything else, little time for retrospect. This is just a straight war movie. Uh, as far as the authenticity of this movie, I think it got it down. Everything that happened in the movie, for the most part, 
everything was based on one thing or another that happened in World War II. And I don't want to give any spoilers away, so I'm not going to tell you what these events are that happened, with the exception of one, which if you saw the trailers, you probably saw the German submarine taunting uh, the Greyhound. That never happened in World War II. And I, I feel that out of everything in this movie, that is the one thing I hated. Just the, the German submarine taunting Greyhound over the radio. I thought that was the only over-the-top thing that I couldn't stand. But the cliches, those normal war cliches that you see in every single movie, like the nervous young private who's shaking in his boots, who needs to be slapped to his senses, for the most part, all of that was missing, which I enjoyed as well, and it added to the authenticity of this movie. I mean, there were a couple small moments that you're like, okay, this is a little cliche right here, but not that big. So I, I thought that really helped the movie. Uh, another thing that I thought the, that helped the movie was that I, I really felt that they went to great lengths to show how comms on an actual ship would have worked. A lot of repeating of orders, a lot of calling up, calling down uh, to the combat information center, which I, I don't know if they called it back uh, that back then, but that's what they call the uh, combat center now. I, I really think they got the chatter down correctly, and I appreciate that, and I love that. Now, for some people, it might, it might be a little much. Um, I, I know my wife had a lot of questions throughout this movie, and that would be ex expected because there's really no setup. You just get thrown into battle. But for me, being a war buff and understanding military and Navy, that didn't bother me one bit, and I thought it added to this movie. And I think that's one of the more enjoyable aspects. It's just a straight-up war movie. Not the best we've had, but it's really a lot better than most we've had. And as, and as far as the naval genre, for now, for now it sets the bar. And it does give me hope that something like Neptune's Inferno or uh, the Battle Off Samar, Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailor, Sailors, it, it gives me hope that those movies can be done, and they can be done in a non-Hollywood type of way, because I really felt this movie got it right, in that it didn't feel like a Hollywood blockbuster movie. It, it felt like a war movie, a, a war documentary or something uh, similar to that. So, overall, I would give this movie an 8 out of 10. I, I thought it did a really good job. Could have used a little more character development, but the the gun battles, everything in this movie felt realistic. The tactics used, the authenticity was there. Only one small gripe with that German submarine taunting them, but that's a minor thing overall. Uh, so I, I think for you naval movie buffs out there, you'll enjoy this movie a lot. Unfortunately, it's only on Apple TV right now. That's the only way you can watch it. it. Hasn't come out on DVD yet, though I would imagine they'd be stupid not to put it out on DVD. So if you don't want to do the free subscription to Apple TV, which you'll get seven days for free, to, so you can watch it that way. If you don't want to do that, you'll just have to wait for it to come out on DVD whenever that is. But I definitely think it's worth a watch. So if you've seen it already, I want to know your thoughts on it. Leave me your thoughts on the movie in the description of this video. Once again, the link to that Teespring t-shirt will be in the description as well. And just really good movie. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Talk to you all later. Zoop out.